Hey guys. On today's episode, we will be taking a look at a variety of artists, from martial arts to heavy metal. Prepare yourselves for a sneak peek into the life of a modern painter and a talented sketch artist. And don't forget to stay tuned because we have a very special guest that you do not want to miss. You're locked into the journal. Welcome back. I'm your host, Calissa, and this is Ashley. Uh, Ash. Ash! Ash! Huh? What are you doing? We're on air! Oh, snap, my bad. <sighs> Hi, I'm Ashley. What were you doing? I was, you know, rocking out. Right. It's this new, new band called Synthetic. Their music just devours you. Never heard of them. Seriously? Synthetic, the heavy metal band? Heavy what? It's a unique blend of rock and blues. Heavy metal is a genre of rock music first discovered in the late 60s. But this band has a unique flair in an attempt to take this often criticized genre of music to a whole new level. Here, just take a look for yourselves. From our very own Fernando Chen, here is Synth Synthetic. Hi, my name is Fernando Chen and I absolutely love heavy metal. Don't believe me? Check out all the merch I bought over the years. Now, if that has to say anything about me, I like to consider myself to be a connoisseur of metal. I like to find bands that are interesting or interesting enough to be enjoyed on their own merit. So with that said, I've been trying really hard lately to find a band that stands out from the Ontario metal scene, and I think I found it. They're called Synthetic, and they're an up-and-coming metal band playing a subgenre that has seen some steady decline over the years, progressive metal. I took the time to shadow them on one of their jam sessions to get a feel of their sound, and it's unlike anything I've ever heard coming out from Toronto. So when I heard they were planning to release a new album on March 7th titled Hive Mind, I had to get in on this. So I went back to the jam spot to get an understanding of the new album from the band itself. So what's your new album Hive Mind about? Um, Hive Mind is about um, you know a, co a collective consciousness, a collective unconsciousness. Um, Carl Jung, um, you know, proposed the idea of a collective, collective unconscious that we, we we pass down these traits um, through through generation to generation. The illusion of separation is, is such a strong uh, force that uh, you know it's it's extremely hard to see the interconnectivity of everything on the surface. You know, we're so alienated from, from that idea that events could be interconnected with one another, that people are interconnected. And so this is a big theme in, in Hive Mind. Do you have any themes that you want to go for with the album? I guess the, I guess the overall theme, and I mean it really kind of spans any of the music that has been written by this band so far. Yeah. Come together to be something better, you know? Let's, why, why work against each other when we can just work together and make shit better, you know? Your decisions matter. And that when it comes down to it, it's all about you. Where do you see Synthetic going from here? I hope that this album will kind of be like a new like, stepping point that we'll just build off of. Uh, it's just like a new step in the Synthetic timeline, I guess. Should fans of your work come in with high expectations for your new album? Oh, I hope they expect huge things, right? Like, they listen to the music, and if they like the music, they're like, well, I can't wait to see this live, right? But like, uh, when you go to any show, your expectations gotta be huge, right? You gotta, it's just the only reason why they're going to the show, right? Yeah. You expect the best. Overall, the night was a success. The album was very well received by the public, and the night had a killer send up as the hide mind assimilated the minds of the new market populace. That was an over-exaggeration, but you pretty much get the gist of it. I thoroughly enjoyed this album. It provided a breath of fresh air into the Toronto metal scene, touching on subjects that aren't exactly metal, but that doesn't make it any less awesome. If you're interested in this band, definitely check them out, because their live shows destroy. 
they'll take your mind there and back and everywhere in between. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to be listening to your entire album in full on my kick-ass sound speakers. I'm Fernando Chen, sign now. about art, the first thing that comes to mind is paintings. We pass them every day, we see them every day. We don't truly appreciate the artist behind the painting. Take this piece, for example. Can you imagine the hard work and dedication that went into this amazing piece? Up next, we go to James Montgomery, who gives us a glimpse into the life of a modern day painter. Good. <laughs> Hello, my name is Robert Graham. I'm 24 and I'm from Ajax, Ontario. I graduated from OCAD in 2012 and I went there for fine arts, uh, drawing and painting. I mostly specialize in oil painting and a variety of other mediums, but specifically oil painting. Part of the reason why I still feel I'm on Facebook is the artists on there. There's a visual artist community on Facebook, which is a great means to see other artists that you probably wouldn't be able to see if it were back in the day without the computer age. <laughs> hey guys, where are we going? Oh, we're going to the Fine Art Museum, you know? Yippee! There's other means where Google has created a Google art project where they basically have museums online and you get to see all the artists that you've probably read about or learned about either in art school or just by your own means. And I think that's probably the, one of the most influential things I've, I've had in the last probably decade now. I think that's kind of what it is now. They want you to be more an intellectual than anything, which I have no problem with. It's more that, the, in my opinion, the conceptual part of art, the artist statement and to have good writing skills, the overall image of a person. What is that? A lot of the time takes over and uh, dominates the visual aspect of it which it should be really the other way around, where the visual should be the most important thing about being a visual artist. Many of you may have heard of the popular YouTube phenomenon called Draw My Life, where people record someone drawing figures on paper. These videos are recorded with fast motion photography and usually represent events in a person's life. Draw My Life came, became popular in 2013, when celebrity Sam Pepper uploaded his story to YouTube. Since then, many aspiring artists have created their own rendition of this concept, including our next story coming to you from Amber. I'm Stephen McCorkle, and I'm an artist. I'll be graduating from university in three months. 
leaving the enthralling world of academia behind with a Bachelor of Fine Arts. For the 23 years that I can remember, I've always been drawing, painting, and creating. I don't think I ever really made the conscious effort to get into arts. It was just something that I did that instantly clicked and had me ensnared. Naturally pursuing it, it meant uh, getting better over time. And it seemed obvious that I should go to school for something that seemed so natural. I grew up working with really traditional materials. Sketchbooks, pen and ink, watercolor, oil, and acrylic, and even tried my hand at sculpting and printmaking. In high school, I was really passionate about creating heavy-handed messages that dealt with corruption and corporation and advertising. It ended up leaning itself to some really surreal designs. But I think I started to grow out of it around graduation. Since then, I've really tried to hone my own process. I have several artists that inspire my work. Artists like Ed Bryant to Heishio Su, Dave Gerton and Greg Baldwin are truly masters of their craft. Their styles are really similar. Both serves as huge inspirations to my work. They just create really stunning and awe-inspiring stuff. And I think there's trace bits found in my definitive style. I'd probably say it's a mix of observational reality with heavy artistic license. Stretched limbs, bowed legs, chiseled features, that sort of deal. Now as everything goes a bit digital, I find that I tend to lean toward Photoshop, using a Wacom tablet to sketch up quick ideas, an in-house program data splash of color. I've seen it really ingrained in people's minds that if you spend 10,000 hours sculpting or painting, you'll achieve something of an artistic nirvana. But it's just something I haven't brought myself to agree with. I don't think you can attach an arbitrary number to any profession. I think every day you stumble upon something you didn't consider before. I don't think formal training ends once you've graduated from university. It's an ongoing process. That only agrees when you're dead, <laughs> so enjoy it. Hold still, I'm almost done. Uh, can you hurry up please before my face gets stuck like this? That wouldn't be such a bad thing. You should learn how to smile more. That's it, I'm done. Let's see this so-called masterpiece of yours. Ta-da! Wow, it's um beautiful, I know. I mean, it looks just like you, don't you think? Sure thing, Ash. While I would love to give you some more time to perfect this beautiful portrait, we do have a show to host. All right. So coming up next, we have a special presentation. This segment of the show, we will be featuring a very special individual. Sanjeev knows all things and has to be proven one of the most knowledgeable people that I have ever met. So let's take a look at what Austin and his team were able to discover about Centennial College's aspiring journalist. Well, hi there. What's new with you? How was your summer? Wait, it's not summer yet. How's your month? Uh, wait, how's... I mean, what's new with you? I'm Sanjay. And you are? I'm Tim Doyle, and I'm the uh, coordinator of the Fast Track and Joint Journalism programs here. And I teach in the journalism department as well. What's Sanjeev like? I don't believe I've met him. 
Never met him? Oh. Here he is, right here. Okay. <laughs> you guys are going to edit this, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard him described as Mr. Centennial. He knows everyone, everyone knows him. He's always very open and welcoming and uh, a contributor and willing to share his knowledge and his expertise with anyone who asks and with many who don't. I think it's important for journalists to be willing to talk to people, be not a, to be fearless, frankly. And Sanjay is, is certainly fearless, not afraid to talk to anyone. And that, that's, a, that's a key attribute of any journalist. Uh, this is where the magic happens in the Journalism News Lab. I am part of the East York Observer. It is a bi-weekly paper, kind of covers like, like everything about East York events, features, stuff like that. For this cycle, I am the photo editor, so essentially what I do is that I edit photos and try like try and make it look pretty. Last month, my editor, she basically pitched the story after snow day, and so we, we went with it, and for my role, I basically interviewed a bus driver who was, uh, who was, who was, uh, willingly to talk on camera candidly as well. He, he's very, very friendly. I didn't know how, how it happened, but I'm just glad that I did. I really wanted to be like on TV and just reading the news. I didn't realize that um, it's like more to than just reading the news and being on camera. It's actually doing a lot of like chasing stories, reporting, interviewing, writing. There's also the photography element. I watched King's Man Secret Service, and that is a bloody good film. He claims the top three position because right now, right now they're sitting at like 14 East contract that Earlier this year, like you have the whole lease throwing, throwing out the jerseys. Just and it was holy crap, so good. Like Seattle destroyed Denver, and I thought it's gonna be a repeat, you know, but I was wrong. I was so wrong. Brady's back to work already. Yeah. He's already training. You see, that's a chance right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just going with that slide. <laughs> but next year, Super Bowl 50, it'll be something grand. I can tell you that. I'd say elementary school wise, I enjoyed it like school life, but getting good grades was the hardest part because I mean I had a learning disability. It was very, very difficult for me. I was like frustrated and my parents they're like they were asking so many questions, why? What's wrong with them? And throughout my high school year, I became sociable, I was I was like racking up academic awards, I was learning different languages. I just became my new and improved self of, uh, of essentially who I am today, right now, sitting in this room. Mm, I saw his uh, interview, that is make me very, very proud, and I read his article, so I am very, very proud of him. You can do anything I won't mind, but be a good, good student, and good son, and good, good, good human being. That's it. Sociable, determined, dedicated person, happy-go-lucky, a mentor, a friend, and overall, a good guy. We're sympathetic, and you're watching the journal. We're not afraid to admit it. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think you could get rid of us just as fast, did you? Still here, and I hope you're right to jump right back into the art world. Say, Ash, did you know that karate is considered an art form? Well, duh. I mastered the art of karate many, many years ago, young grasshopper. <laughs> oh, really? Uh-huh. Hi, you! So, you can, like, break boards and spin kick? Psh, that's easy. I can do that in my sleep. But there's actually a lot more to it than kicks and tricks. It is a study of discipline, confidence, and self-control. Many martial arts students find it to be quite relaxing. I can't imagine doing backflips and karate chops can be relaxing, Ash. You'd be surprised. Well, let's have a look at this next story from Dina, proving that girls can kick butt too. I came 
to the karate club and I came in for my class a little bit early one day and Mr. Watson was there and he had a bunch of kids and he was talking to them, I'm going to talk to you, we'll talk about intimidation, I'm going to show you what it looks like so you, when you go out into the real world you can recognize it and know how to deal with it. And at that moment, with that, um, with him saying that, I said, my, my daughters have to, my daughters have to get some of that. They have to have that training. Primarily the girls spend the majority of their time doing karate and extreme martial arts, XMA. It makes me feel like it's special to be in such a great program like that because we get to do a bunch of cool things and you get asked to be in XMA so it's like they want you to be in it. They've been at it for so long and it's a part of who they are. It's almost like a, a second language to them so they don't really have to think about the skills or the techniques and the art part comes in the fact that they can adapt what they're doing or they can make it their own and they can really have a great time expressing themselves through martial arts. I made a lot of friends here in the five years I've been doing it. The sense of community of being a part of a, a group of people focused on a particular thing. They have a family here. They are respected and they have a lot of respect for the people. They have friends. That kind of foundation is, is really, really positive to build confidence and, and self-esteem. And they always know that whatever is going on in their world, they have that foundational skill. They have that family. People in my class are like, they're always saying, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And they're saying, like, well, you don't want to get into a fight with them. <laughs> There's no mistakes in art. So it's something that they get to try and practice and hone their skills without having any consequences with art. It is what it is it contributes to their self-esteem and, and knowing themselves through their expression. <laughs> well, folks, that's all the time we have for today's show. And thank you for joining us. And don't forget to tune in next week to learn all about technology. I'm your host, Calissa Palacio. And the ever-lovable Ashley White. Now we have a special performance here for you from Akeem Raphael. Bye. Bye. I've been torn. Better yet, I've been born. Because bitter buttered better at broken birth. But I was broken. Broken. Broken by the windbreaker, but I didn't have a coat to cover me. Because my day dawned dimmer, leaving me with no choice but to be a swimmer. But I was drowning in pain. No one talked to me down to flames. No, no one did. No one talked to me when I was insane and my brain locked in chains when pain came. Nope, not one voice outside of me, but one voice within me, one voice within my skin. And that voice traveled down my vein like a choo-choo train. It was not contained in the fast lane, but who's the one to blame? when you can't see the sunshine because all you see is rain. Okay, so I filled up my cup, but it got slapped because some sticks thought it was a puck. And thought it made me feel ugly like a duck to the point where I said, I don't give a fuck. Because my emotions and my life was torn up. Then lightning struck and it hit my heart. Helping me see why I was torn apart. Torn between the two, torn between the you, torn to be between the one, torn to be a gun. And the gun was all I knew because it saved and killed lives. I never would have thought the gun would kill me alive. But as the trigger faced me, 
It's shot, you're worthless. It's shot, you're useless. It sniped loneliness. It bucked fearfulness. All of these shots twined out my joy, my happiness, my love, and so much more. Leaving me with nothing but tears because those shots were loud and clear in my ears. You suffer to die. You suffer as you try. You suffer. I don't know why you think I won't fly. You see, I don't suffer to be in fire, but I suffer to inspire. I may have been torn, but please believe I've been reborn. I was broken before, yes, but I was broken to be blessed. You can fly by any time, windbreaker, but just know that I'm the windmaker. And my day may done dim tonight, but surely I will rise and be daylight. And yes, I may not know how to swim, but teamwork makes a dream work, so someone will jump in. You can spit hot fire, but I guarantee you I will get higher. And if no one talks, then I'll let my peace be still, because I know God within me will show me the will so give me all the rain. I'll wait for the sunshine because a rose garden needs both over time. And the, if so if my cups get filled up and shot down to the ground, then I'll keep moving because karma comes back around. And the ugly duck became beautiful over time, so I won't let your ugly words get the best of my mind. Shooting shots at me may hurt, but I'm dodging like the Matrix Rebirth. And even though you only left me with pain, you're not the only creator or maker of this game. I may fall and rise many times, but that's the battle within the mind. I'm fearless within me and fearful when you see me. I am that I am because I am a warrior, and the war within me is to be. So let me be aware, let me be free, let me be love, let me be me. This is the war and the struggle within me, within you, within us. Because we are humans and emotions can be tough. But free your negativity, free your past, free your mind so positive love can last a lifetime. Just be free. Because there's greatness within you to be a star. Leave the judgment to the judge and not the jury because even their eyes can be blurry. So, how did I overcome this fear that made me cry for so many years? It's easy. <laughs> I didn't. I did it because it's a part of me. It's the art in me. It's the heart in me that can't be divided into two. But what I did do was change my attitude. It was my attitude that molded my mind. It was my attitude that redefined my time into a straight line instead of it being crooked all the time. And when I changed my attitude and how I saw life, it changed my life and how I write. You see, life is a book and every day is a new chapter. I write what I think, whether it's great or a disaster. I just write, I just write. I just write because life shoots words at you, but the greatest shots are myself. So if I'm going to shoot anything to myself, then I'm gonna shoot higher. I'm gonna shoot for the sky. I'm gonna shoot for the moons. I'm gonna shoot for the stars. Because if a, the gun is all I know, then I'm gonna aim for a better life. Because no one could shoot the same way I aim to write.